African Americans are being hurt more seriously, killed actually, by coronavirus than are white people, all out of proportion to population density. Um, why is that? Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. First of all, is that uh, this virus is killing uh, people of color, black people specifically, um, African Americans in much higher proportions than it is killing white people. And, you know, I, I, I don't know that I've, I've seen any statistics on Hispanics and, you know, that, that will be coming out, I'm sure, as time goes on. But right now, in Louisiana, black Americans make up 70% of coronavirus deaths. In Chicago, there's 72% of coronavirus-related, COVID-19 related deaths are black Americans. That's six times the rate for white Chicago residents. And in, in both areas, only 30% of the population is black. In Illinois as a whole, black Americans are only 14% of the population, but they're statewide 41% of the coronavirus deaths. In Michigan, black Americans, 50, 15% of the state's population, 40% of coronavirus deaths. In Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, 81% of the people killed so far are African Americans. Number one, African Americans are more likely to be doing blue collar work than white collar work, so they're less likely to be able to work for home, from home, so they're more likely to be out there and being exposed to this virus, number one. Number two, African -American, the African American community has been widely discriminated against throughout the entire history of this country. You know, obviously, you know, enslavement and everything else, but, but just in the last 60, 70 years, the reason why red states, in particular the southern states, have been unwilling to go along, the reason why they were unwilling to go along with single-payer health care when Harry Truman proposed it in 1947, the reason why they were un unwilling to go along with single-payer health care when John Kennedy proposed it in 1961, the reason why these red states were unwilling to go along with, me you know, with uh, Medicaid expansion all across the states in 1967 when Lyndon Johnson put it into law. The reason they refused to go along with it was because they did not want, quote, undeserving black people, that was one of the phrases that was commonly used in the South, to get, quote, free health care. That's the simple reality, is that racism has created economic inequalities, but also health care inequalities and health care outcome inequalities. And as a consequence of not having access to good health care, and as a consequence of not having access to good jobs in many cases, you have a large population, you know, a, 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 a consequential chunk of the African American population that is suffering from the diseases of poverty and oppression, including hypertension, which is the number one risk factor, the most lethal risk factor for coronavirus. About half of coronavirus deaths coming out of China were people who had hypertension and obesity and diabetes, which is the second uh, most dangerous of these things. So this, this is exposing, I mean, it, it, we saw yesterday in Wisconsin exposing the, 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 you know, the Republican voter scam. We're also seeing the, Repu now it's Republican, you know, prior to 1965, it was Democrats in the South who opposed, you know, black people getting, getting health care. Now it's Republicans. Um, you know, it's, Bottom line, racist white people is the bottom line. Meanwhile, and this ties into this, I mean, this could be available to, to African Americans as well as to everybody else, uh, an international team led by the University of British Columbia researcher, Dr. Joseph Penninger, has found a trial drug that blocks the cellular door that SARS, that this COVID-19 uh, uses. It was published in Cell Magazine. And uh, this is an amazing piece of research. ACE2 is a protein uh, on the surface of a cell membrane that is the, the, the receptors for, uh, it's called angiotensin. Um, it's a hormone that the body uses to regulate blood pressure. And these receptor sites in the body are the place where this virus enters the body. And so they've come up with this thing called human recombinant soluble angiotensin converting enzyme 2, HRSase 2, which blocks these receptor sites so that the virus can't get into your body. Now here's the kicker. The reason why this was done as an international effort instead of in the United States is because they were able to demonstrate that this works 
by taking human blood vessel and human kidney tissues grown in petri dishes from human stem cells from aborted fetuses and were able to test this. In fact, one of the quotes from the study, using or these organoids, uh, these little tiny human organs that are grown in the, in, the, in the lab, allows us to test in a very agile way treatments that are already being used for other diseases and are close to those validated. Time is short, human org organoids save the time that we would spend testing a new drug on humans. So compare that with the headline here from the Washington Post last year. Trump ban on fetal tissue research blocks coronavirus treatment effort. A senior scientist at a government biomedical research laboratory has been thwarted in his efforts to conduct experiments on possible treatments for the new coronavirus because of the Trump administration's restrictions on research with human fetal tissue. And they're talking about this immunologist at the National Institutes of Health in, Mon in Montana who has been begging the officials to let him use these tissues because they've got some really substantial discoveries that they think they can play out. And the Trump administration said, no, that tissue comes from abortion. You may not do it.